everybody, how's it going? So tonight we're going to be talking about Orca Slicer. We're going to do a quick tip on sequential printing. This is where you load up multiple smallish parts on your build plate and you print one at a time right to completion before the printhead moves to the next part. So it's great. It's a time savings if you need to sort of have one done to completion and rip it off the bed and just sort of let the printer go about doing its thing. It's fantastic. There are some obvious uh, upsides to it where let's say you have a partial clog and it's halfway through one of your layers and that layer affects all of your parts and that partial clog is potentially going to affect all of the parts on the build plate versus if you have a partial clog in sequential printing there's a there's it's more likely that it's just going to affect a single part maybe two parts or something like that the clog goes away and you've still got a decent yield of parts on your bed versus having to throw the whole thing out so there's some really, really nice features or really nice benefits to do in sequential printing. A um, couple gotchas that you need to be aware of, and we'll go through them here in a second. So for this, for tonight's example, we're just going to be using uh, uh, primitive shapes uh, on the build plate to, uh, to demonstrate this. So if we right click anywhere, add primitive, I'm just going to add a cylinder. I'm leaving it the standard uh, 22 millimeter size. And if you control C and control V, if you're on a Windows machine, uh, then you can sort of pop through here. And if you hold the control key on your keyboard and click, you can get them all. You can auto arrange by clicking the auto arrange objects up here, specify some sort of spacing to give it. I'm gonna call it 55 and just hit arrange. Um, and you can see it, it's not great. Like I don't love the auto arrange feature here. It by default, there's plenty of room to give this thing 55 millimeters but it's, it's saying 55 from all of the sides and between each other. I know I can print a part. Come on. Let's control Z that. There we go. So I know that I've got plenty of room to do what I need to do. Like I can print up in that corner, no problem. I can print in that corner, no problem. I can print in the middle. I can do, I can print down here on the extremes with my machine, no problem. Um, I have little to no chance of the printhead actually while it's over here printing, it's 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 not going to smack into one of these parts, right? I've got plenty of room in between each other uh, to actually do what I needed to do. So by default, we're in we're in by layer slicing mode, right? And so the way to change this is very simple. You come over here to the others tab, you find special mode, and right here, print sequence. It's by layer on by default, right? So if you want to swap that over to by object, hit that. Now you're printing sequentially. So let's look at the differences real fast because there's another gotcha in here. So if we do by normal, right, by layer, normal default slicing, let's slice that plate. Let's see here, we've got 53, almost 54 minutes worth of print time to get all these five parts. You've got 12, 12 minutes and change of just travel, right? No printing, just the blue lines of travel. So it's 12 minutes of just moving around the bed. So to me, that's wasted effort. Um, there's some, some for sure time savings there that you can get. Um, it won't be completely reduced, but we can get it down there quite a bit. So if we go over here to print sequence and we change the by object, we go ahead and slice this plate one more time. You can see now if we come up and down, it is printing one part at a time. So very cool. It's nice to see it. Finish one, rip it off the bed, move it along. But the problem is now our time is bumped up to one hour and 17 minutes versus the 53, 54 that it was. Uh, and uh, now our travel time has come down significantly, right? So we're at just under four minutes instead of the 12 minutes. So that's good. But all of our inner and outer wall times have shot through the roof and that has caused this. Now where that comes from is part cooling, right? So in the slicer settings, we have specified somewhere a minimum part, a minimum print time or a minimum print speed to, and that helps the part cool off in between layers, right? You don't want to be printing something small, super fast, and not giving it enough time for the layers to actually um, cool off, adhere to each other, and move along without like it crumbling, melting like a witch. So <clears throat> now it doesn't have to be super extreme. Now if we come over here and we change from line type view to speed view, you can see right then the very bottoms. I'm printing up in the 50s, right? Probably 50 millimeters a second. When we get to the actual walls of these cylinders, we're probably printing more like around 10 or 15 millimeters a second. So it's going awfully slow, and that is to enable to make sure the part has time to cool off. I think it's a bit extreme. Here's where you change it. So up here under your filament settings, you click on the edit presets, and over here on the cooling tab, it is this guy, minimum print speed. So the minimum print speed, you're under the cooling tab, right? So relative 
the setting is relative to what tab we're on. So if we're under the cooling tab and we're saying, you can slow all the way down to 10 millimeters a second to make sure this thing gets cooled off enough, right, for small features. I'm comfortable with my machine and the part cooling that I have and all that stuff. I could print each one of these at 50 millimeters a second, I think, no problem. Probably not the full 60 millimeters a second that I would normally print with, but 50, probably fine. So if you click that, right, and then you can save it, you can either overwrite what you have, you can give it a new name and call this sequential, um, and that's actually what I've done. Um, so I've, I've renamed this as a sequential um, filament setting. So I can just sort of pop back and forth in between my generic PLA and my generic PLA with sequential. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close that for now, but I'll go ahead and swap over to my sequential one. Uh, transfer. Uh, I probably didn't want to do that. So let's double check that we're still good. Yep, 50 millimeters a second, that has been changed. Now if we re-slice this plate, again, right, from a speed perspective, now we're running up in the 50s, right? Pretty much 50 all the way through, no sweat. So if we change over here to line type, look again, now we're down to 49 minutes and 20 seconds. So we've saved from the original, remember we were at 53, 54 minutes, so we've saved five minutes on the job. You get the obvious benefits of being able to pop each one of these off as soon as it's done, right? Um, so that's kind of nice there. So there you go. Like and subscribe. Drop a comment, right? Interact with the video if you wouldn't mind. Um, pretty please, sugar on top. It really helps the YouTube algorithm if you are interacting, even if it's just a thumbs up or drop a yay comment or something like that. Or give me an example of something else that you want to see, um, and I am happy to do the deep dive and figure out how the heck to do it. So thanks again, everybody. I uh, really appreciate all the new subscriptions and all the new audience members, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.